So, welcome back to our penultimate, yeah, penultimate Locarno Dispatch. Um, we've had to take a shelter in a kind of weird sort of Indian restaurant kind of chill out area. I like it. So we don't have as nice a view behind us as we've had some previous times, but you know, we're still capable of talking about the films. So today I think we'll begin with a film that we were both, that we both saw separately, but both saw, namely Alex Ross Perry's Listen Up Philip. What do you think of this film? I think that he's channeling Woody Allen through his entire body into making Woody Allen's most pretentious films more pretentious. Okay. What so did you can think? You do the hand movement. I, awesome. I can. I can do the thing. It's the surrounding. Like okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, I'm not a big fan of Woody Allen, and therefore I don't know too many of his films. But I found Alex was very, I mean, I like his previous film also showed here, The Color Wheel in Cineasta del Presente, I think three or four years ago. Two. Two years ago, thank you, Beatrice, always on top. Um, <laughs> um, with, the, with The Color Wheel, it was very, I don't know, one dimensional, but also kind of funny. Whereas in this film, it's, it's, about, it's about a writer who's hugely, hugely arrogant, who's just published his second novel, who's reached everything that he thinks he ever wants to reach. And now, Funnily enough, decides or oh, realizes that he's unhappy, and basically the film starts off amusingly. I mean, Alex was probably certainly good at writing like horribly, horrible put downs, passive aggressive insults, oh, yeah. backhanded compliments. I mean, it's like a sort of acid bath of embarrassment on some level. But it also kind of revolves around the idea that kind of everyone is horrible. Horrible people are horrible to each other. Horrible people do horrible things yeah. to other horrible people. And after maybe 40 minutes, you've kind of realised that that's the case. And then the film goes on for like, just over Wait an hour. Long. Also, the way he portrays women, he has like, it like it just seems like he has no idea. Not at all. At all, like zero idea of how what women think, how they react, what they do. Completely. It's just, it's like, it was so weird to watch that because it just didn't make any sense. It was. On the surface, there was like mm. the, the typical, you know, banter back and forth. But this this persona of this woman that he tried to portray, it was yeah. completely empty. I mean, it was it was interesting because Elizabeth Moss, who plays the the female lead, is actually a really great actress. I mean, she's I done. Know, but really not great. in that film. In this film, you can just, she's just kind of flailing because she's basically, I don't know, just a few very token characteristics that don't really go into a figure at all. So um, when she gets the cat instead of. The yeah, passive aggressive boyfriend. Yeah. That like that was the moment where I was like, oh, f come on. Yeah, yeah no, I completely <laughs> like, agree. Like really? No. No, I completely, I completely agree. I'm right with you. So yeah, not the most successful of things, uh, of American uh, contributions to the competition. At least, at least in our humble opinion. Yeah. But Beatrice, have you seen anything else that's possibly uh, more <laughs> A wee bit better. Yeah. I mean, you and I sat in the same screening of Pedro Costa's new film. Can you pronounce it for me. Cavallo uh, di Nero, Dinero, I think. Horse money, that. horse money. And I basically, you and I, when walking out of the theater, just had like open mouths and were really, really stunned and confused in to, a really to, good way. To an extent that we actually, I mean, as you may have noticed, we enjoyed talking together, and to the extent to which <laughs> we didn't actually say anything to one another. Because That's true. It was kind of impossible at that moment. But to give a little bit of information about the film, it's, in a sense, the fourth instalment in what can be termed his Fontenas quadrilogy, which started off with Ossos, was continued with Invander's Room, then Colossal Youth, and this is the, the fourth instalment. And it's... Amazing. Yeah, fairly For staggering. Like a, a I mean, it follows the same protagonist from Colossal Youth, an old man from the district of Fontenas, a poor district of Lisbon. It follows him. Once again, he's now significantly older than when we last saw him in the last film, and is has a tremor and is clearly mentally unsound. And we see him wandering through the corridors of a mental hospital, although these corridors could potentially lead anywhere. They could lead into the past, they could lead into the future, they could lead into dreams. And most of the film is about a complete dissolving of any sort of boundary and a kind of a wandering in search of answers, 
references, ideas, more this, than anything else. This is exactly how I felt. This is where I was so stunned because the dissolving of boundaries also happens with the audience. Mm, like at completely. some point, you just you just completely Im like submerged into the film, and then there's like there's nothing left of you, and you're in that thing, mm. although you don't understand what it is and mm, where it mm. goes. And it was that was really nice. Yeah, like, it's, it's it's I mean it's a I would say the most unique. Like experience I've had this well the festival. I mean, there are other, there've been other really really great films, but I think this film it reminded me on a very. I mean, it's formally in in terms of formal context, it's very very different. But it actually reminded me of Inland Empire by David yeah, Lynch because it similarly is kind of a summation of all that Pedro Costa has ever done, mm. but in a way that maximizes it whilst also collapsing all the boundaries between all the different things he's done. And um, yeah, it's a hugely, hugely impressive film. I mean, I still, I mean, we watched it. I, mean, I think you and I are still like uh, yeah, scrambling I mean, for words. Because we. It's very hard to explain. Completely, completely. You just have to go and watch it. Yeah, I mean, we just have to pray, hope and pray that it gets a German release date, or indeed a release date anywhere else, because that's not a certainty in this day and age. Mm. We have to stop here. <laughs> yeah, I, we just, I think we, we just, we need, just like, need to, we need to like, Ponder about this. Yeah, maybe and drink a coffee and then just coffee like, would be amazing. Maybe have a bit of a cry, just like together. A little cry would be nice. Yeah. And then um and then we'll yeah, but we'll be back tomorrow for our maybe maybe tomorrow we can say more. About this. Exactly. Maybe Probably we'll not, but we will try. Indeed, but um for now um we will hopefully have a pleasant evening as will you. Um yeah, that'll be it. Let's go. Okay, nice. <laughs>